So there's the topics, <laughs> very simple. One, two, three favorite strategies and get out of here as early as we can and start our three day weekend, which everybody has if you're in the market. Here's number one, a great setup on a frame of reference with a perfect multiple time frame coordination. A lot of big words, meaningless words, what matters is really the picture. So let's take a look at this trade. Now, what I was saying was that anytime I come on and show trades that I had done, they're always from the recent couple of days. I don't want to come back and show something from, you know, from three years ago or whatever it is. So this was a trade from PM, Philip Morris, Tuesday morning, March 27th. As I was saying, I scan a lot of charts, but I do it very, very quickly. It takes me about 30 minutes to do everything. And then in the morning, I start work at eight o'clock. At eight o'clock, I get, get ready. Um, I, I'm looking at... Previously throughout the day, I had looked at from before the, from after the prior day's close, I look at daily charts, hourly charts, and then that morning I will look at the stocks that are gapping. We'll, we'll take a look at one of those in just a minute. It does not take me long to do this. It's about 30 minutes of work before the market opens, uh, but before the night before, and then I start work at eight o'clock that morning. So here's when I was scanning. Here's what I saw on PM. This is the type of thing that I look for in this case. Now this again was not my favorite hourly chart. Um, there weren't any super favorites this week because of the choppiness of the market this last week, but this one here caught my eye. This is one of the ones that I save, I flag, and end up with about a half dozen of these, and then I come to the market the next day looking for a certain set of circumstances to play this. Now, this is the hourly chart, and I'm looking at that a couple of things here. I'm looking at this big decline in here that occurred. Um, on the hourly chart after that many bars down. And then here's the daily chart that matches. This is the daily chart of Philip Morris. Again, this is the day. See that little doji as you may know it is right there. That is how it looked the day that I was looking to play this. And what had actually happened was the stock had gapped up a little bit that day. I don't know if you can see it on the hourly chart, it gapped up and it refused to ever come down and fill that gap, which is in a sense, a very bullish thing to not even want to fill that gap, that very small gap. So, with the daily chart and hourly chart, I bring that on my screen and I look at it in the morning. Now, what becomes very important here is that this is not the play I'm locked into doing. I, I always come to the market with, you know, at least a half dozen things that I'm very interested in doing early on. And then I wait for the setups to come to me, as I call it. Um, I wait for the proper setup that I envision happening. And if that doesn't happen, you let it go. You don't chase anything. You don't do anything with the stock that's not doing exactly what you want to see. You need the right market bias, the right market timing, and confirmational entry is critical. Market bias and timing depends. Most trades you do, some you don't. And then confirmational entries to me is very, very important to make sure that the stock's gonna be going in the direction you want it to go. So here's the five minute chart. Now again, just to follow along, this was the hourly chart right here. This is the setup going into the trading day on the 27th. There's the 27th, we haven't started yet. Here's the daily chart going into the 27th. Now here is the, the five minute chart on the 27th. So this right here is the daybreak. You guys, can you see where I'm pointing okay? John and everyone, can you see where I'm pointing in here? Right there, when I use my arrow, can you see that good enough too? Can you guys is it, can you guys hear me? Are you guys out there? I don't see anybody typing. Maybe I'm just not seeing the screen. Do you? Are you guys out there? Are you typing? <laughs> Renee, are they typing? Um, yeah, it looks like they are. Okay, they are I'm sorry. This yes. this thing is just not. Okay. All right, sorry guys, I'm just not seeing when you're typing for a reason, I see your names here, but all right. So, so the market opens this day, and what I want to, when I want to catch, remember this is the day I'm, I'm trading it, I want to catch this pullback here to the support area. Now this is not a great support area, this is not the basis for the trade. The basis for the trade, the strategy, comes off of that hourly chart consolidation after those many days down. Now typically I prefer to do this exact trade in a daily uptrend where the daily chart is not extended and the hourly chart consolidates for a day or two. However, this daily chart did what I call not negating the trade. In other words, because rather than being strong, it is so weak and had this what I call a puke out day. When you hit support like this and you're multiple days down, that break of support is not a bearish thing. It's actually a bullish thing. 
because after multiple days down, you don't effectively break support. Oftentimes you test it, it's called a little, it's called a shakeout and you come back and add higher and that's exactly what happened. So I actually like the daily chart the way that was set up. It was not what I prefer, but it worked for this trade. So five minute chart and I actually come right in here and then I get very aggressive with an entry when I know where I want my entry to be. If you go and look at your own charts, you'll see 96.45 was a very aggressive entry, stock stop under 96.10. And you can see the power here that happens. I do these uh, in a trading room that I run, and the trading room um, is something that I run. It's not a community, I mean, it's a community effort in a sense and that everybody gives their two cents, but I'm on the mic talking, I run the room, there are people there who like to follow me exactly, and there are people there who um, have been following me for years and years. Actually, there's a couple of people in there that have been there um, with me for 15 years a couple of people more than a decade. And they, they, those more experienced ones, we usually like to take what I say and then do their own thing with it. So they're not following me exactly sometimes, but they're taking the market buys, the trade ideas and using all that to complement what they do. So this is the post that goes into the trading room. So ahead of time, this and this trade happened at 12, 1033. You can see the approximate time there. Post came in PM long, 9632, 90, 95, um, 90 PM trade. Why do I have the wrong, different numbers there? And it ended up, I, I think I, I changed the entry. I didn't capture this properly because I changed, I changed the entry on this before that. But this, this ended up making about two and a half risk units. In other words, whatever the stop was, it moved two and a half times further than that. So if you risk $500, you made $1,250. Everybody risked different amount. If you, if you risked $100, you made $250. If you made, risked $1,000, you made $2,500. Um, and I really did a good job on this one capturing the targets. I usually take two targets, sometimes three. I got one right here on that wide range bar, um, set a trail for the rest, then took the rest up in here. So it was um, an overall really nice trade. And the whole thing was done in about an hour and a half, something like that. And that's that's typical. I'm not a scalp trader at all. I, I don't do things. Um, it's not my style to get into something and then you know be out of it th three minutes later. I mean, sometimes a quick first target may come, but generally I'm looking to hold or to trade for a half day or a full day at a time. So that is number one concept for me, uh, phenomenal. And again, I, I use the, just the word general time frames. When I'm day trading, it's a great hourly chart that is complemented with the trade time frame below it, the 15-minute chart, and does not violate any rules on the time frame above it, the, hour, the, the, the daily chart. The same concepts could apply if you're swing trading, using the daily chart, the weekly chart, and the hourly chart the same way. So to me, that is this is just the, the core of understanding technical analysis. It, it is my favorite set of trades. Every day I come to the market with a couple of these in my back pocket ready to go. They don't always trigger. They don't always do what I want them to do. But this is my favorite number one concept, which is what my title was and the reason I'm here talking to you today. And I'm just simply here giving you some good concepts right now. That's, that's, that's all it is. And again, everybody is, is very different. I understand that. Um, everybody does their own thing to a large extent, and I get that. But this is what I do in the time frame and the, the concepts I fell into. I also do long-term trading, but the room that I do is just for the intraday. I give suggestions and other things, but I don't actually um, you know, do the plays of them in the room, so to speak. The concept number two for me, it's called gap trading on day one. Now, stocks, when you're playing during the day at the morning, there are stocks that gap every day. Gapping is a somewhat unique in my opinion. Most all technical rules you learn in a lifetime of trading don't apply, or at least most of them don't. Uh, there are lots of fallacies about gaps. I'll review one of them on the following chart. I teach gaps in a separate class. I think they, uh, I think all other technical stuff helps you know, uh, but gap trading is a little bit in a vacuum, meaning that a lot of the gap trading stuff is just kind of unique. It happens, everything is disrupted the day a stock gaps a lot. Um, by the way, let me, um, toss this out here real quick. I'm sorry, I'm a little uncoordinated here because of the way I'm projecting everything right now, but um, let me, where do I type this to you? Right here.
Okay, I can't get that to you, but <laughs> um, if you, I'd like you to just, when you get a chance, go to my website. Can you type that in there, Renee? Do you, can you paste that in there? DisciplineTradingStrategies.com. It's a long name, so somebody could click on it. I want you to read um, the lower part of my webpage where it says warning. I, I'm not the typical person you probably hear talking. Um, I almost tend to talk people out of getting into this endeavor unless they feel they're really qualified to learn it. This is something anybody can learn, but most people fail when they try quite honestly, and I'm very upfront about that. I've been doing this a long time, and I, as my introduction said, I, for most of my career, I was with companies, uh, mostly with Pristine for a long time. And there's, you know, there's a lot of good things about Pristine. They taught me a lot of stuff, but when you're with a company, it's a company, a big company that has to stay in business by selling stuff all the time. And what I'm doing now is having fun. Um, I have things I offer, you want to sign up, great. If not, I don't care. Um, there's never anything additional you get from me. Um, when you sign up for a seminar package, there is no upsell. There is no next step. Um, I become your mentor. It's a very cheap price. You get three days worth of seminars. Um, you repeat them over and over and over again. You get two other days that are educational days that complement the seminars. You get access to me. Um, I go in a chat room with you if you're having trouble, review your trades, whatever it is. I am on a mission to make people successful. And that's all my mission is. You'll, you'll see if you read my website, and I encourage you to read the warning down at the bottom. It's a real no-nonsense discussion about seminars and about everything else. And, uh, you know, if you want to contact me, email me, feel free. But let, let's go on to what we were. I just want to throw that in here real quick because I mentioned a class, and I don't want you to think that, that that's the goal here. You know, I'm having fun with my traders every morning. Some people want to learn this stuff. I teach them um, every six weeks. I do classes on Saturdays. LHO morning of the 28th. This is a stock that had gapped up. Um, it gapped up to here. I want to do just a little teaching here for a minute rather than just show you this one strategy. I said that there are a lot of fallacies about gaps, and I want to explain this one to you. I'm afraid I can't see what you're typing for whatever reason, but at least you're able to hear me. But let me ask you a question, and you know, if you want to throw an answer out there, feel free. Maybe I'll fix seeing your typing. But if a, if a stock gaps up a really lot, now again, this is a daily chart, and a gap means, of course, that it closed down here, it opened way up here. The next day, the stock news comes out, whatever it is, earnings, said something good, said something bad, and it opens at a far different spot from where it closed. When that happens, when that happens, if the stock gaps up a really, really lot, is there a tendency for that gap to want to close, to fill? In other words, the gap's up a lot. Is there a tendency for that stock to fall just because it gapped up a lot? Is that, is that true or false? Give me just a second to think about it. And I'm also trying to see if I can see your answers. <laughs> I don't think I can. The answer is that there is not a tendency for that gap to fill just because it's a very, very large gap. That's one of the, the fallacies I talk about, if you will. Um, a lot of people think that way because sometimes it will. I'm not saying it can't, but I want you to think about something. What made this stock gap up, in this case, $4 or whatever it is? It's $3. That's 15% that's on a $20 stock. What made this stock gap up $3? Well, the answer is, that there were a lot more potential buyers and potential sellers, right? It's kind of like an auction. Everybody comes to auction, everybody wants to buy it, nobody wants to sell it. So the stock opens $3 higher than where it closed the night before. So there are obviously tons and tons and tons and tons of people that want to buy this stock. Would you all agree with that? For a stock to gap up $3, there are tons of people who want to buy this stock. Does that make sense, everybody? Make sense? How many people does it take to make the stock actually trade up here at 28.25? And the answer is one, only one. It only takes one person for that first trade to go off to make the stock gap up $3. My point is that 
when the stock opens, you see it up $3. There's been one person who has traded it out of a ton and ton and ton of people that want to buy it. And we know that or wouldn't be gapping. So the point is that whenever a stock gaps up, even a huge amount, as a matter of fact, the more it gaps, the more we know there are a ton of potential buyers. There are always a ton of people who want to buy this, always. It's guaranteed. So it's not true to say that once it gaps up, it's going to happen. What happens, there's a balancing act that occurs. The more it gaps, the more people who down here were long want to sell. And this is why looking at a chart becomes so important. You have to establish that balancing act, that equilibrium between the tremendous amount of buyers we know are there and what may be a large amount of sellers we don't know, may or may not be there, right? And this is why it becomes important to understand gaps and reading a chart and understand the four characteristics of support and resistance and when they matter and the size of the gap and all these good things that really come together and collate to make you give an opinion on what to do. So when I saw stock gapping to here, I knew it was a stock that I wanted to short if it tried to rally once it opened. So when the stock opens, I watch it and let's go on this. Here's the day of gap. I'm going to go to the five minute chart now that day. And you don't see the prior day's trading range here because it's way down below. And sure enough, the stock rallied right into what I call 10 o'clock reversal time. 10 o'clock reversal time is a big deal. If you're not familiar with it, it's a really big deal. If you don't believe me, go through and take a look on your own charts whenever you get a chance. Take a look at the number of times that 10 o'clock reversal times reverses the market or any stock that you're looking at, it sets the higher low for the day or for the morning. There's also one at 1030 if 10 o'clock is not the proper one, okay? So when we rallied into here, I knew this was time to short. As a matter of fact, as I said, I'm so confident in some of these that I shorted as the stock was just coming down off that high. Um, entry under 29.10, stop 20, uh, over 29.74, the post went out to the trading room right at 9.57. And this stock ended up being held the entire day, all the way down to here. I used a little bit wider stop, and it did not fall nearly as far as I thought it would. But nevertheless, I managed this all the way down right into the close, right into that bottoming tail there. And for the most part, I'm not sitting here watching this. I think that's something important to understand and to realize, unless you're a micro scalper, if you're looking for something to hold for two, three hours, to hold half a day, to hold for the day, the best way you can make money oftentimes is to just leave the building and to just put stops in appropriate trail areas. And I did that as it fell here and then here and then here and continue to follow it down. I never had to take any portion of this. So this is my second favorite strategy, number two, which is to play a gap on the day that it happens. Now, there are several varieties of possible gaps you can play on the day that they open. Um, I group them into what I call tier one, tier two, and tier three type of concepts. This happened to be a short of a stock that gapped into resistance, kind of one of my favorite ones, and it happened just a couple days ago, so I included it. Number three is gap trading on subsequent days, after day one. Everybody thinks that gap trading is for those opening minutes, and sometimes that's correct. Sometimes things set up the opening minutes, but the truth of it is it's very rare when you have a stock that you really end up trading the first five minutes. A stock that's really a high quality, high odds thing. A lot of them do move, but they're not always clear which ones are going to be. I like a lot of them to set up at 10 or 10.30 or into lunch, and sometimes on day two, or day two or day three. Some gaps, most gaps, are meaningless. The ones that are not meaningless should be followed for days sometimes. They can be swing trades or continue to provide day trading opportunities. I have POP down here. POP um, stands for picture of power. What gaps do is they create a strong bias in the stock. Some do. Some gaps are meaningless, as it says, but the ones that really work and change the direction of a stock, the direction often lasts for days. And you can often find trades coming in days later. Here's an example of my number three favorite strategy. This is PE, Friday morning, March 23rd. This here, that first arrow, this is the daily chart. This is the day the stock had gapped on this day and had a big wide range bar creating that picture of power. I didn't trade it that day at all. I wish I would have. I wish I would have known about it. I wish I would have seen it, but you can't follow everything. But once that, I saw that, have that big bullish move that day, I started following it on day two and on day three. And on day three, here's what I saw coming into this. This strong pivot that is really formed in the proper area, forming support, and then a pullback that day. And this is where we opened that day. So I wanted to see that support area retested. This is now what's called a major support area. If I can retest that during the trading day, I want to buy that and go long. 
And the issue is that that won't always happen. You can have stocks on your screen and say, here's how I will trade them, here's what I want to have happen, but it doesn't always happen. And that's why I like to have several possible plays so I don't have to be chasing anything, so I can wait for what it was. And this one happened to set up just perfectly on this particular day. The stock opened, it gapped up a little bit, and then it pulled back here and did a little buy set up right in this area, right in the major support area. When that happened, it turned around, entry over 2741, stop over in 2730. Now, one thing you have to be sure of is I normally don't have like really tight stops. I usually give things a little more room. And when you do have something tight like that, you have to be sure that it's liquid enough because the tighter your stop is, the more shares you have to get to capitalize on a move. In other words, um, an 11 cent stop, that means a risk unit is 11 cents away. And in order to make a risk unit pay you your full amount, if you're risking $500, you have to take enough shares to make that work, which is going to be in the 5,000 share range. You have to make sure that the stock is liquid enough to do that. This one is, PE is a very liquid stock, but you have to be careful that if you're trading things where you need a lot of share size, you can't trade illiquid stocks because you have a hard time getting in or getting out of them. So it's a very important thing to realize as well. The I'm going to show you in a minute, you know, the results from the room that I do where people are following me. What's important before we even get to those, though, are is the fact that people can follow along with me. We spend from 9 to 9.30 going over the possible things I'm going to watch. People know ahead of time, and 95% of the time, the things I have on my screen at 9 o'clock are the things I'm going to be trading that first hour of the day. Um, they're, they're discussed ahead of time. They're posted ahead of time. They're generally speaking on very liquid stocks. Now, stuff happens. I, I can't guarantee that once in a while something doesn't come up a little quick or is a little tougher to get into. For the most part, though, you can follow along. That's what some people do. And again, some people just use my guidance to add to their own knowledge to have really, really great trading days. So again, there's the post that went out, and here's the trade. And this one here, I thought this was a great trade getting out at this topping tail here when it started to back off. This thing went twice the distance. So the profit I made, and by the way, on this one, I personally only took a half risk on this, but it didn't change the reward to risk it made. If you risk 500 bucks, you made 1250. You could have made twice that amount, more than twice that amount. This ended up being a six reward to risk trade if you got taken to the top. Had you taken it to the top, that's always one of the issues in trading is that you not only have to have the concepts in your head, how to do them, you have to find the right entry, you have to find a great entry, and then you have to manage the trade to get to your target. And it's that last part, that I think a lot of people, more people than not, actually end up having problems with. Is that not true, everybody? It's that last part that people have trouble with. I'm just taking a look here. I wish I could see what you're typing. Um, something broke because I see John saying still on your screen at 309. Oh, there's some stuff. Oh. Oh, I know what happened, guys. Ah, uh, you know what happened? My column missorted, and I was sorting by, okay, I accidentally clicked on something. Now received it. There we go. I can see what you're typing. Hey, how are you guys doing? Let me take a minute to catch up because we're going to, like I said, I, I made a short presentation. So luckily, hi, guys. How are you? I can actually see what you're saying there. Usually this happens to me. There's something updating the bag. Okay. All right. I'll just say we're up now. We're up. We're good. Hey, Chung, do I swing trade or day trade? I do both, Chung. Um, I just um, came out with something. I, I day trade, and that's what the room is for. We day trade. We try and make it short. We try and, you know, for the most part, wind the day up around 11 o'clock. Like I said, I keep the room open typically through lunch or even later, but we try and wind the day up as much as we can. I do swing trade or core trade, long-term trade, but I only give the suggestions in the room. I don't really do them, per se. And, I mean, I... When I say don't do them, I mean I'm not entering and exiting and giving guidance in the room. They're just suggestions. However, uh, I've had so many people that say they want to be in the room with me, but they can't because they're working part-time. They're doing this. They're doing that. And they wanted me to do a full-fledged, um, you know, long-term trader letter like I used to do years ago. And I, I just came out with that. 
matter of fact, an email just went out a few days ago about it. So if you go to my website, you can see all that stuff. I wonder. Huh, I still can't type to you guys. At least I don't think I can. But anyways. Um, All right, so how does $500 by 5,000 shares? Right, but that's what I was saying. I mean, I don't often have a stop. It might stop again. They're, they're all over the place. Like that one stop on that gap up trade, the stop was 80 cents. So, you know, share size is, even if you're risking $1,000, the share size is 1,200 shares. It's not a big deal. When you're doing tighter stops, you have to make sure that the share size is there and available. See, in, one, one issue is, you know, and I think it was a very before we was talking about this. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on out there, you know, and I've been part of this concept. I've been trading a long time and part of trying to show people. And like I said, it's always been a little frustrating to me because I was part of a company. And it was always kind of a sell, sell, sell thing. So that's all just behind me. It really is. I'm just having fun. And anybody that knows me now knows that. Um, but the room, the purpose of it is for people to really be able to follow along. My goal is to create some successful traders. And again, please read my website. It's not necessarily for everybody. But if you're a long-term trader, there's a letter out there for you that's just starting. It, it, not The first issue hasn't even hit the screen yet. I just simply put an email out a couple days ago. And if you like to day trade, um, the, the room is, is phenomenal. Um, we have the enemy. <laughs> hey, Pogo. Can your strategy be used with equities for, yes, absolutely, I'm, uh, I'm, all, I'm okay. Absolutely, um, it can. What you're trading is a chart. What you're, there are people that talk about Forex being different and they talk about different moving averages. None of that matters. I mean, I don't. it doesn't even matter what moving averages you use. Again, if you have a chance to listen to me more or you listen to some of my stuff somewhere. Renee, I don't know if you did, I'm sorry, but could you just type my website on the, on the screen or did you do that already? Um, did she type it, guys? Just, I just want to make sure you can get there and I won't give you anything else, but just make sure you can find where I am because it's a long name. You got it. Okay, good, good, good. So um, if, if you go there, there's a there's a tab called free stuff, free stuff. And if you go there, there's a lot of good educational stuff that's all free. I know a lot of you guys, believe me, I've been around, I've talked to people. I, I just been through all this myself. I, I know people have been through it. A lot of you just you, you either spent a lot of money and you're screwed, you feel like, or you, you just don't have the time to invest to do this. I'm here for whatever you want. There's a ton of free stuff on my site. All the past events I've done, listen to them. There's great educational information. There's some free videos on uh, good educational topics. There are trade of the week videos up there uh, so you can learn. And when you're ready to do something, whether it's join the room and trade or get the letter or, or take my seminars, whatever it is, you know, do it. I, I never have a sale. I never have a special. I never have any of that garbage um, because it's it's stupid. It's like it's like a college saying, "Well, we have our algebra class on sale." Now. I mean, it's, it's it's not. When you're ready, I'm here. Um, my pricing is ridiculously cheap. It's so cheap that some people think it can't be real because there are people that charge twenty five thousand dollars for what I teach, and it's just that time in my life. This is what I want to do right now. Uh, I just became an empty nester. Uh, I thought I was going to kind of retire. I decided I didn't want to do that after taking a year and just trading on my own. I really miss this and. I'm going to be around, I'm guaranteeing people, four years minimum. I'll update that in two years. Maybe I'll hang around a little longer. I really enjoy doing this stuff. People that know me know I just love doing it. So, yes, you can do this with Forex, whatever you want. Now, Amal, you said, can you do this using options? I mean, you, you don't, tr options are not a strategy, right? Amal, you know that. Options are a way to, to trade any other strategy that simply alter the reward to risk. That's all they are. So you can have a strategy and you have to still be trading the stock or whatever it is the underlying issue you're looking at. And then if you want to go long the stock or whether you want to short puts or go long calls, whatever it is, or do spreads, you know, that's up to you. But yes, what I teach works with all the stuff, absolutely. Do you use options for your traders strictly playing a stock trading? I do not use options day trading, Jay, because I don't think it's worth it. You can do it, I know, on some stocks, but I just do the stocks, period. For longer term, I do supplement some things. I don't trade the stock. I always trade the equity itself, but there are some things longer term I will do with options. I used to trade options a lot when I first started, and I just got away with it from it. The only thing I would like to do that I, I may revert back to because I just loved it was just trading spreads. If you do options, you should do bull 
uh, and bear spreads. That's the way to do options. It's very laid back, very high, um, high odds, not good reward to risk, but good high odds. Do you also tend to short stocks versus long in three? I, I do like shorting better than long. Here's Jay. Um, here is what I believe. I follow the charts. When the power is going up, you're long. When the power is going down, you're short. That makes sense, right? When things are neutral, sloppy, and sideways, you short resistance. That's what you do. Because in sloppy markets, stocks fall faster than they rally. It's an absolute unquestioned fact. I'd rather be short than long, given the choice, yes. But all strategies work the same. Every strategy is an exact mirror image, long or short. There is no difference. What broker and platform do you use? Um, Jay, email me that. I don't want to go into that here. And I also, I, I, when I'm doing the room, I have up trade station. I use different platforms. I don't think asking me for recommendation or platforms is is worthwhile because the reason I use them may have nothing to do with why you want to use them. There's there's one I've been using for years and you probably won't want to use it. You know what I mean? So it's just, don't futures give you more bang? For, futures give you tremendous bang for the buck, TJ. And, and again, you can use all the stuff to trade futures. I do trade futures a little bit on the side. I do them once in a while when I love the trade. I don't actually put them formally in the room usually. Um, because the way I do them is very weird, but um, futures give you incredible bang for the buck. As a matter of fact, you can open an account with about $2,500 at most places and be able to trade one futures contract. Now, again, I'm not saying it's what you, what you should do. If you lose 500 bucks, you have to probably add some money to it, but you can trade, and, and one futures contract, man, you can make four or five, 600 bucks a day without a whole lot of movement. I mean, you really can. They're very, very leveraged. But here's the thing trading futures, everybody you're restricted to doing the one thing. You have to trade the market. And if the market is not set up, or I guess what people tend to do, guess what people tr tend to do? They tend to force trades, right? Tend to force trades. Very few people have the discipline and patience to wait for the right setup. And the more possible trades you have in front of you, the more likely you'll have the setup you want. Does that make sense, everybody? That's at least my concept. That's my concept. Right? The more you will have in front of you. Yeah, you forcing trades, you will lose. Guys, you have very limited odds when you trade. When you know what you're doing and you know the charts and you have the patience, even then, the odds are a little bit in your favor. Not huge. It scares me to think people go out to trade and they only know 80% of what I know or 75% of what I know or they don't have patience or they didn't take, or they don't know what they're doing at all, and they think they can just wing it. Um, this is why most people fail. If you're properly instructed and you're properly coached, uh, I think there's a very good success rate. And again, that's I literally have this desire. Listen to me. I just have this desire to have as many people under my wing that learn how to do this for real. Because I think the industry has a bad reputation because there's been just big companies out there that, you know, it's funny. I, I, I'm on a lot of these emails just to see what people say, and it's like, you know, pay X amount of money. And you know what it gives you? We'll give you all this education. It gives you 10% off future products. Well, what future products? What the hell are you talking about? Why don't you teach me to trade for the $3,000 I gave you, right? And that's, if you want to do my seminars, it's $29.97. You never pay anything more, never, ever. If you've taken classes with me before, you can get a retake program for almost for free. But that's it. There, there will never be another class. You will never, ever, yeah. And I mean, I don't want to call that. You know what? I, I, I people I learn from some of these people and I have great respect for them. Okay. But they're big companies and they have to make money, you know, and to make money, you have to keep selling to the same people. Now I just came out with this letter. You know, this letter I just came out with everybody that's with me now in the room, they get it for free. Why? Because I don't want to go to people who've been with me for six months and say, Oh, start paying me more money. I'm not into getting more money from people. I do well, People have to pay if you want to be with me. You know, if, if you have to pay, you have to pay the price. It's a cheap price. The room is 147 uh, a month. The, the seminars are, are 20. I didn't even want to get into this. I'm sorry. You can read it on the website. Um, oh, yeah, God, I wish I could type in here because I have other links. Well, make sure, guys, make sure you become a free member when you, when you sign there. It, it, you just have to give an email. You don't have to give any credit card, no name, nothing. Just give me your email. You'll get on the free um, informational list and you get free stuff and, um, and email me if you have any questions. I have a couple of good links to emails that give great explanations of the seminar program in the room. Um, 
I, unfortunately, I can't type. I don't know why I can't type in here. I don't know if I'm not authorized to or um, I don't know what the problem is. It seems like I should be able to, but I can't. But anyways, um, and yeah, don't take off yet. I want to go over one other thing with you. Boom, boom, boom. Do you trade five dollars? No. Do I trade less than five? Yeah, I don't care. I don't trade penny stocks, Jay. Penny stocks to me takes the out of the technical analysis concept. You're in just flim flam, scam bam. Thank you, ma'am. It's just who knows. Um, but I do, but I don't have a limit on stocks as long as they do volume. Some stocks get down there, it's fine. Okay. Um, you're in the mode of giving back. Yeah. Well, that's one of the hardest things is to, is to manage the trades. You know, management is where the discipline comes in. But here's something I want to get across to you guys, just real quick, if you're here. Um, I don't want you to lose money learning how to trade. What about your your credit spread training? Does it be any, well, Chuck, I, I'm actually not offering any, well, as part of my seminar program, again, just to show you what I do, I added a class on options. I didn't charge anybody extra for it. It's just a free addition to the seminar program. Nobody's paying more for it. It's part of the new program for anybody. But I only teach it once or twice a year. Um, but I am not doing option calls right now as part of the room. I may include them as part of the letter. Okay, but when I do anything, it includes management and everything. The letter for long-term players is going to be a fully managed, like fully thing ready to go portfolio. If you want to do nothing but just have a portfolio handed to you, that's what it's going to be. And what I know is a lot of you guys, you'd like to be in a trading room, right? But you don't have time to be there full time. Is that correct, some of you? Yeah, right. I'm a that's smoke and mirrors, penny stocks. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of smoke and mirrors in the market. You got to, you know, learn to see through all that stuff. Um, a lot of you would like to be in a trading room, but you can't because you're only available a couple days a week. You don't feel it's worth it. Well, here's here's what I decided to do. Well, here, if you are in the room, again, everything that I do is very visible, shown to people. Here's the watch list everybody sees ahead of time before the market opens. That's done from, you know, looking at me, me looking at 1,300 stocks. Here's what you see on your screen. I have some charts up. You're following along. Here's the posts that go in there ahead of time. So you can play along if you want to. Again, they're discussed ahead of time. They're, they're always on reasonably playable stocks. The, the room, January made tw about 22 R for the month, meaning if you risk 500 bucks, you made about $10,000 gross. Now that's gross. You have to back out your slippage and commissions and blah, blah, blah. But I mean, that's just gross. If you risk 300, you made 6,500 bucks. Um, and, and you needed to have about, the average was 41 K in a four to one account. I'm going to go through this really fast here. February was 21.5, a little bit better actually per trading day. 10,750 if you risk 500 bucks of trade gross. This is what the room did just following along. Now, all honestly, sometimes people miss something. Sometimes they do their own thing, whatever it is. But this is just what the room does. Now, March, I, I don't know what it was. I had a tough March I, for no reason. People in the room said they had a great month following along and doing stuff on their own. But I had a tough March. Um, so Overall, the three months, it's only about um, 38 risk units right now. So if you're, you'd be up about um, 38K if you risk $1,000 a trade, 19K for the year if you risk 500 bucks a trade. But the important thing is that I will average 20 risk units a month. I just do. I mean, that's what it's going to be. So if I had a tough month this month, it's going to be a, a great month next month, a better month the next month. That's just what it's going to be. Um, I'll take all your questions here. Renee said we can hang around longer if you want to because there's nobody following me. I'll be happy to stay here and answer all the questions you want. When you go to the website, again, I can't give you the link because I can't type in here, unfortunately, but if you go to the website, it won't be long before something pops up in front of you or you can click on the center part and it says become a free member. And you, you'll get some stuff from me for free and you can visit all the sites for free whether you sign up or not. Um, and what I also wanted to show you was... No, do, do. Oh, I don't have a slide about it. Shoot. Oh, I do kind of. If you, I was saying that a lot of you can't be part of a trading room. So here's what I decided to do for everybody. I figured people either want to be in a trading room or get a long-term letter, right? If they have time to day trade, they want to be in the room. So I figured why charge people for both? So I said, you know what? If you're in the trading room, you get the letter for free, period, done. If you're going to sign up for the letter, you know what I'm doing? I'm letting people, giving them access to the trading room for free, period. Boom. Why? Because I figure most of those people can't be in the room full time, so they can pop in whenever they want to. If you're free a couple of mornings, pop in, make some extra income. Follow the letter, come in. 
how much does the letter cost? I, I, you know what, I'll let you go to the website and look for yourself. Okay, so scammers make money because they're selling. Yes, thanks, Paul. I'm in the same way. Give back. Okay, how about smoke and mirrors? Do, what about your credit spread? Didn't I answer that? Oh, I'm sorry. Those are the same questions. Okay. Time but no money is a tough one. Yeah, you have to have some money. You have to have a little bit of money. Why are you attending these if you have no money at all? Just hopeful in the future, getting ready. But I, I know a lot of people just aren't ready to, you know, to jump in and, and, and pay for any education. That's fine. Just follow along, get all the stuff you can free. Try and learn it yourself. I don't really suggest that because it's a very hard process, but you can. I mean, any smart person through trial and error, it'll probably take a couple of years. You know, your education, if nothing else, it's a shortcut. It's, it's a shortcut path to say, hey, it's not so much here's what to do. It's here's what not to do. Because you may spend six months doing the wrong thing. Does, can anybody relate to this? You spend six months doing the wrong thing and you don't realize it. But yet, if you would have somebody over your shoulder saying, hey, dum dum, that's the wrong thing, you may not believe me. But after you do it a couple of times, you'll say, hey, you know what? He's right. That's the wrong thing. Do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? And that's, that's what an education is for the most part, if nothing else. It's, it's just simply a shortcut to learning. So, you know, whatever you guys want to do, I am just here really to try and collect, you know, to create as many profitable traders as I can. Um, and you'll see that clearly if you read over the website what it is. And I will be here for quite a while. And as I said, there's never a sale or a special. It's just when you're ready, check me out. Since you're a former first meet trader, how is your current course different? Well, here's why. Great, great question, Jay. How's my current course different? Um, the first class that I teach three classes right now, and they're called Mastering Technical Analysis, Mastering Advanced Tactics, and Mastering Gaps. The first class is a very, very intricate, advanced way to look at technical analysis. A lot of the stuff is stuff you would have heard discussed before. But a lot of it is taught very wrong. A lot of it is taught, in my opinion, very wrong. Even people who, have, who are teaching it teach it wrong sometimes. And what I've done, Jay, is I've cut out all what I call the filler. Jay, if I wanted to, I could teach seven or eight classes that were full day long classes. And if you, there's a place you can sign up for $25,000 and they give you five full days of seminars and blah, 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 blah. But you know what's in a lot of those classes, guys? And I'm not trying to badmouth anybody, but it's just the fact of it. it. There's a lot of what I call filler. It's stuff that they put in to give you something to talk about. But the problem is filler starts distracting from what's important. What I've done is I've stripped out all the crap that you don't need. And what is in there is this stuff you need to make money. What I, a saying that I say all the time when I'm teaching is I use this every day to make money. Every day I use this to make money. And that's what's important. There's stuff I used to teach, I had to teach, that was, it's nice to know. It's great if you're hanging around the water cooler and you are bored and you wanna talk about the fifth and sixth uses of volume. But the, the truth of it is there's two uses of volume and all the rest of it you can throw out. And the two uses of volume you can learn in about 30 minutes. And all the rest should be thrown out. And that, that's the thing. You need to get rid of what you don't need to know and boil it down to the stuff that makes you money as a day trader, as a swing trader, as a long-term trader. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah, Val, I hate to hear that stuff. I hate to hear that. Val, you guys... I, to avoid what Val is saying, I, I, one of the things I want you to do is when you go to my site, go to the re, go to the free stuff page. There's a prior webinar I did called um, "From Chart Reader to Trader Investor." Please read that. It discusses how you should never, ever lose much money learning to trade. Nobody should ever lose much money. It tells you how to do it. Okay. It doesn't guarantee you can do it, but it tells you how to do it or where you decide you should quit. I hate seeing people lost in account. I hate that. Education, hang around. Yeah, it's a double-edged sword in some places, TJ. Because like I said, you know, and I've sat in on these meetings, you know, I had to. And, you know, it's it's not a bad thing. It's part of business. But it's I'm so glad to be on my own where I can just say, and I should have done this years ago, to be honest with you, but you know, I was lazy. It was just kind of like, <laughs> it's a little bit of work. To, I thought it was a lot of work except your own company. Actually, it's not. This is fun. It's easy. It's a piece of cake and I can do whatever the heck I want to do. And I can say whatever I want to say. 
Um, but, you know, there's a lot of good educational places out there. I don't want to badmouth them. But the thing is, is just like I said, pay this huge amount of money and you get 10% off future investment. Future what? You know, that's what drives me nuts. Future what? <laughs> you know, it frustrates me. You know, it's just here. Here's what I want. Teach me. And and that's what I do right now. I do not guarantee anybody will be successful. I do not guarantee anybody can walk and chew gum at the same time. I guarantee you, you will be blown away by what I have to teach you. I guarantee you, if you're in the room, you will see how you make money every single day. I'll definitely use your invite and beginner. Okay. Good. Good. Um, yes, for the month. Oh, well, I'm sorry for, um, that would be for, that would be risking $500 for the first three months because I had a tough March. I was working at a rate of, of 10 K a month and I, I had a flat month. I don't know why, but it just happens once in a while. It was just kind of flat weeks. No particular reason just happens. And I'm, t I'm telling you that front, I'm not here hiding anything. It is what it is. I've been trading forever and it'll happen once in a while but it just simply means see but if i have a losing day you know how i look at it i go this is great because you know what the next couple of days are going to be gangbuster if i have an off month or whatever it is look out because i'm going to average 20 risk units a month it's it's what i do so there's just good stuff coming i don't think there's a good or a bad time to ever start or stop trading or investing you can always look backwards and say gee that was a great time you just start. You're never when you, when you're in it. You're never ever sure what's going on. You always have to take every day one day at a time. There's never a guaranteed thing like wow, gee, we're going up every day. I don't care what period you go back to. You have to learn what you're doing and learn how to trade. It's it's not. I, I hate to say this to a to what, and I know some of you are experienced traders. Don't get me wrong. I don't want to sound like I'm talking down to anybody, but. I, I hate saying this to a newer group of people for those of you who are new, but there's a saying that that I've coined that I, I, I think Mark Douglas also coins, which is called, it's not about being right, it's about making money. And I know that sounds silly to some of you, but it's really true. It's not about being right, it's about making money. Strategies, strategically speaking, people that wait for too much confirmation never make money. You, you have to act when you know it's right and we know the strategy's right. If you're wrong, you're wrong. If you're right, you make money. And that's what I do every day. You tried one or two. I need one or two. Tried or two systems. Okay, Michael. I, again, we're at four, but uh, she's Renee said I can hang on, so I'm going to keep asking her your questions. Now, maybe the word system to you means something different to me, Michael. I'm talking to you right now with your word system. The way I define a system means that it's a purely objective method of trading, meaning that you're 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 pu you're looking. Is that what you mean, Michael? Like you you go long over the high of the last 22 bars, your stops under the low of the last 15 bars, you go for a target that's 1.1 times that difference, um, in, in whatever, or, or it comes from technical indicators. See, systems do not work. You need to have a method. Now, maybe I'm just being semantics here, but to me, a method implies some subjectivity. There is some subjectivity in trading. You cannot ever avoid that, and don't let anybody tell you that you can there is some subjectivity. Your goal is to become as objective as you possibly can. To take the trading world, to take all of the things you enter the trading world with, to throw them all out, to stop saying the stock has to bounce there, to stop saying the stock can't go higher, it can't go lower, to, be, to become as objective as you can. But then no matter how objective you become, think about this. Two great traders may disagree about the entry on a play. That's where the subjectivity comes in. And it'll always be there. But if you get down to that fine tooth comb, that, that, that's a little bit of subjectivity, you're going to be successful. But systems per se don't work. Technical indicators do not work to enter trades. I guarantee you they do not work. It's common sense, guys. It's, it, see, it's un, I, I, what I teach, <laughs> sorry, what I explain right now is I teach charts like learning the language of charts. That's what I call it in the six months I've been doing discipline trading strategies. It's called learning the language of charts. There is no magical formula. There is no magical squiggly line. There is no magical concept. There are strategies that you learn to refine that, that revolve around learning the language of charts. Yes, you can kind of box things into strategies, but every time you look at one, it's like a fingerprint. Every chart is slightly different. And the more knowledge and experience you have, the better you will be at it. You don't have to have my knowledge to make money. You have to have a reasonable amount of knowledge, though. That's why if you take seminars with me, I insist 
that you retake them three to four times. You retake them as long as you can. I reteach them every six to eight weeks. And, and, and I'd say it's really four to six months before you should be prepared to really be able to take on the market on your own. But along the way, you know, why not make money while you're learning? Why not be in the room, take the trades, make money, and then use a very limited amount of money to test your own strategies? Yes, I think you all want to learn to trade for yourself. Yes, you all want your own style. That's great, but don't lose money doing that. Follow along with me, do what I'm doing, and then off to the side, risk some money on your new strategy and, and test it and, and do it with small, I'm mean, talking like 10 bucks, just a minimal risk, just to test it, just to prove you're successful at what you do and then slowly start supplementing what you do to what I do and then if eventually you're doing all your own thing, that's great, okay? Um, what is the average hold time of your trade? Uh, great. Crest and truck, it would range. Um, I try to hold truck. I try to have a back half last all day. I'm not a frantic trader. Here, here's what you won't like. Let me tell you. If you're a scalper, if you're a high energy scalper and you want to be in and out of something in three, four minutes, I'm not your guy. I sometimes enter things in a very minute way where you're saying, what the heck are you doing? But I look to hold parts of the trade all day or into lunch. And that for, I, I try and do thirds, Chuck. I try and get safe with the first third. And that first third may happen in five or 10 minutes if I'm lucky, if I'm good. Then I try and take another third for a bigger move. And then if it's the right trade, I try and take a third all day. If not, then I do halves, okay? So it's kind of a laid back style. It's not a frantic thing where you're, you're sitting with your hand on the mouse and you have to pee into a bucket. It's not that type of trading for me. Matter of fact, I encourage and tell people to walk away. When I'm in a trade and I get things set, I call, okay, I'm in walk away time. Let's go walk away for an hour. I'll come back, I'll check in an hour and type and see how we're doing. I try and hit the mic hard for the first two, three hours and then I try and stay off the mic and just type as I need to, okay? Depends are not required. Yes, I decided we should get rid of those. Yeah, I, it's just not my style. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. It's just not me. I've done everything, guys. I've done everything. I've done everything. And you all have to find your style. And I find that my style is what a lot of people like, is to put in a half day's worth of work to let the market do its work for you for the most part, if you can, um, and to um, you know not be frantic uh, about managing, over-managing. Uh, most of you, I bet you anything, over-manage your trades and that you take partial profits on big winners um, and, you're, and you're just stuck in this back and forth, little win, little loss scenario, right? That's, that's where a lot of people end up and that's something you have to get over. So Barry, sorry. Uh, that's year to date. Yeah, okay. That's all right. Um, how much? Um, th the trading room is right now is 147 a month. It goes up as subscribers go up. And the reason is, guys, understand, it's not about me making money on the room. It's I want to discourage people at a certain point. I'm probably going to shut the room off at 75 people. I haven't decided yet. Also, if you get the trader, uh, the long-term trader letter, I'm letting people in the room for free with the trader because I don't think a lot of those VN very much. So it's going to depend how much they're in there. So the room is cheap, um, but it'll go up to 174 when there's 50 people. Right now there's about 40 people, 41, 42. When it gets over 50, and I don't advertise for the room other than this. I don't. I haven't spent a money at a penny advertising for the room. I, I do the trade of the week. It's on YouTube. People have known me for a while. I have, there are hundreds of people that know me. Word of mouth. Doing presentations like this with Renee. Um, and I'm going to probably cut the room off at 75 and start a waiting list. So um, it's it's not much, but it will go up to 174 when it hits 50 people. It's automatically. So it's just what it is. And again, understand, I'm trying to limit the growth of the room. I don't want a room with 100 people and it's too hard to be honest with you, it's not that it's too hard to manage the room. The problem is that, you know, there's, there's a limited number of people doing exactly what I'm doing. But if that gets to be too much, it gets to be a little difficult to enter and exit freight. It's, it's the simple truth of it. It's just what it is. So I, I want that group of people who are with me in the room to follow me to be able to do things properly and accurately. Okay? Well, a trading plan is a different word, Michael. A trading plan is a critical concept to have. As a matter of fact, Here's a famous line for me. If you do not have a trading plan as a day trader, you will fail. You will fail. If you don't have something that you can look back at the end of the day and say, what did I do right? What did I do wrong? You will fail. So a trading plan becomes your method. Yes. I use, and again, maybe that's system to you. That's fine. I, I'm just saying that it cannot be, Michael, you understand you cannot use a purely objective concept, right? 
you cannot use a purely objective, like something where you could teach it to your five-year-old son and say, okay, you know, when the squiggly line crosses the squiggly line, you go along. That doesn't work. It's common sense. Guys, if I was having a poker game and I said, I'm going to invite six of you over to my house and we're going to play poker, and I have this great new game because everybody walks away a winner, would that be a great game or would I be lying to you? Yeah, I'd be lying to you. There, there is no poker game where everybody wins. Somebody has to lose. It's the same in the market. Losers give money to the winners. There is no system where everybody can plug into the system and we all make money. It's just common sense. Oh, sorry about my microphone. We're so close to the end, though. I'm just going to stick with it. Sorry about the whining, LP. Um, John, um, there's, you might want to email me. Um, there's a couple of things. I mean, number one, you could try doing futures. It's a little tough to do, though. I wouldn't recommend doing that if you're not very experienced. Um, my commentary on the room and in the letter is, is good, but I don't think it's something that I would recommend a new person to try and follow necessarily. Um, but I, I am working with trying to be able to recommend a prop firm. I don't put my name on something unless I believe in it. I'm trying the place out. It's a place where you could put in way less than 25K and still be able to day trade. But there's big pluses and minuses. Email me. It's something I don't even have today for you, but in the future maybe I'll have for you in the next month or something. Okay, John? Okay. Yeah, but for the moment to day trade, you, but you know what you can do? I mean, try longer term trading. Try and build that account up a little bit. Add anything, whatever it is you're going to do. You know, it is, it is a problem right now. All right, guys, I'm at the end here. If you have any more questions, you know, feel free. I hope you enjoyed the little talk. I tried to give you some real down-to-earth three favorite things I do every day. You, you know, understand one thing. I just want to give you this little warning that the, the things I showed you today, uh, if you go to my website and you look at the trade of the week videos, understand that it's the tip of the iceberg. The knowledge that goes underneath these concepts is what makes me successful. And I'm not saying that, please believe me, I'm not saying that because I want you to sign up for a class. I could care less. I really could. But I, I don't want you to go out and lose money thinking that you understand the concepts when the knowledge underneath these I could talk about for, well, I talk about for three days, to be honest with you. There's three classes I talk about all day long that I consider to be the critical knowledge. And a lot of that goes into the stuff I showed you today. Obviously, it's not the time or place where I have the time to go into all the background of everything I look at in the chart. You're just seeing the summary of here. Here's a trade setup I loved. Here's how it happened. Here's stuff that just happened this last few days. Boom, boom, boom. Not every trade's a winner. It comes down to management. A lot of this does. Um, man and to me, management involves not only managing between uh, on the way to your target, but managing the entry and managing the stop. Managing the stop is one of the most profitable things I do, and most people would be shocked to even understand what I do because they don't have the knowledge or they don't have their mind open. As a matter of fact, some pleasers will tell you that what I do is criminal. It's not. It's actually very profitable. When you do something profitable, it's a good thing. But anyways, looks like we're out of questions. Thanks, guys. Um, visit the website. Look around. I couldn't relay to you some of the stuff I wanted to because I couldn't type. But feel free to email me. Uh, again, you'll find that on the website. It's a pretty well-organized website. Um, Check out whatever you want. Email me if you have any questions. Sign up for the free, the free stuff. And hey, hang around a while. See what you think. And uh, take a trial of the room if you want to. That information's all there. Uh, is that supposed to be unlimited? What's that, Walt? I'm sorry. What's supposed to be unlimited? Oh, did I make a typo somewhere? I make typos all over the place. Um, unlimited. What, what's unlimited? Hey, thanks, Anna. Good to hear from you, Anna. I know you. Beginning of the last line. Yeah, unlimited. <laughs> Unlimed. Unlimed. <laughs> yes, unlimited. Sorry. This last slide I kind of threw together at the last minute because I didn't have it ready. Um, yeah, it means that if you sign up for the for the for the letter, uh, I don't want people to pay twice for stuff. So you can come to the room like any room member, any day, any time, any place. Boom. That's what it means. Okay. <laughs> no, thanks. I, uh, yeah, typos here. I don't care. What matters is you get the trades right, right? 
<laughs> I, I, I know you have a camera. All right, guys. Have a good one.